We've got a guest of honor here in the Tracy Boards recording studio tonight. First question for you, Ron. I'm going to ask you a few questions while we play. And I'm going to warn people that while you're having a conversation and not really focused, the caliber of play may not be as high. But later on, we'll, we'll, we'll stop talking to each other. We'll pretend that we're not friends. And, and we'll, do a race, better. we'll do a race to nine. And we can focus on our shooting. But um, how do you pronounce your last name? Langel. Langel. Yeah. Okay. There are people that think it's Langeal. And there's no E on the end, by the way. I, I never bothered telling you that. <laughs> you wait till we're on camera to embarrass me for my typo. I think it's because people always leave the E out of my name. I decided to insert one into yours just to yes. keep things balanced. Some distance relative dropped the E from my name, so everybody thinks the G is hard. Okay. Because with the E, it would be Langel. Without the E, people think it's Langeal. Langle. Yeah, I guess yeah. I've heard different people. I've always called you Ron Langeal, and I'm like, isn't it Langeal? And I'm like, oh, he's never slapped me. So, anyway. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to play. So I'm glad I could wait till we were on film. I appreciate you. that about you, Ron. So we'll play and banter at the same time. So, tell me, how long have you been playing Crokinole? Thank you. Um, like when I was a kid. And then so I, that was like 30 years ago. Yeah, like yeah. 80 years ago. Um... And then I didn't play again until my brother told me in 2018 that there was a croquet tournament in Tavistock. Right. I think I remember you telling me that so, was the first yeah. the first organized tournament you went to, but I didn't know how long you had played before that. I, I bought a board about two months before the tournament okay. so I could practice, and that's when I started playing again. And that was the, so the World Championships, is the one, that was the first tournament you went to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys do the competitive division or the rec division? We did. We did uh, rec. Rec. We, we yeah. We weren't brave enough to be yeah. competitive. And uh, oh, great try! I think if if memory serves, it was shortly after that that uh, you joined the Waterloo Club or yeah. St. Jacobs or both. Or? Yeah. So at the tournament, I saw the flyers for the club, the Waterloo Club. Yeah. A little intimidated the first day I walked in. I look in the door. And I recognized John Conrad yep. and Jason Beerling yep. from all the videos. Mm -hmm. Almost turned around and left, <laughs> but I decided to walk in. I'm I don't want to hang out with those hoodlums, he says. Yeah. I thought maybe I'm a little over my depth. Oh! Hey, we should keep talking like this maybe. all the time. Nice shot. So, hey, yeah, my... you should keep talking there, Super Steve. Huh? <laughs> My brother didn't fare too well, so he decided that was the end of his crocodile career. So. You guys were on the same team. That's yeah, two, we were doubles, nothing. and then we, uh, in, the, in the singles, I think I ended up third in the singles. In the rack? Yeah. Well, that's all right. I yeah. It was bad for my first tournament. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that was 20, 2018. 2018. Okay. So you just would have got in 2018, 2019 at the Worlds. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I played I competitive in this, 2019. This is awful. How much did you play at the St. Jacobs Club? Right in that first year. Um, played in Waterloo a couple of years, and then mm -hmm. Howard said the St. Jacobs Club was going on. Yeah. So I played that same thing, just yeah. the, two, the two seasons. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Your oh, start? supposed to be my start. Like so what... I know what I love about the game, but what do you, what do you love about the game, and what do you love about the competitive crokinole? Talk about a leading um, question. Yeah. What do you love about it most? I like the. It might sound stupid. I like the social aspect of it. I hope that, that doesn't sound stupid because I like it too. That was the first thing that caught me at the worlds, and maybe it was because we were in the rec division, right, and not in the competitive. That people were more open to talking and okay. chatting and that. Yeah, kind of a community kind of feeling. Ooh, sorry. Hey, what are you? You apologizing? <laughs> I don't know why I'm are you apologizing, apologizing to yourself? Are you apologizing to the pegs? <laughs> Who are you apologizing to? See, yeah. I, I, if I was playing doubles, I'd have to say sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I've never played in the rec division at uh, at the Worlds. I, uh, oh! I'm not going to say that was planned. That's, you should say sorry for that shot, Ron. <laughs> Come on now. Nice. Counts as much as that. Oops. 
Almost gave another one there. Oh! And competitive, I, I just like it because when you get to a s certain level, if you just stay, like someone said to me, why don't you stay in wreck? You can make, you can win something at the tournament. Right. I thought, well, that's not really what anybody's there for. Nobody's going to get rich off the cook. <laughs> There goes, so I, I there goes not, my retirement yeah. plan. What? I'm Tell not, me I can't get rich? Well, you might, yeah. They, uh, <laughs> you, uh, not off the plane, but <laughs> I'm digging a dig, digger, a bigger hole every time I talk. <laughs> oh, wow. Great shot. I'm going to have to keep try just talking next time we're in a tournament just talk during the whole tournament it's right you working out well well you're shooting well but you're losing the round yeah so i don't know true. i don't know if your strategy is working for you or not mm -hmm. but yeah i don't think you i don't think you can get any better unless you get into the competitive right i don't know if you watched the video i just put up of uh, the highlights of ray and i Yes, the, I saw some nice shots. <laughs> just uh, that wasn't it wasn't the reason I was bringing it up, but yeah, we did we did have some. I, I'm not sure. Like, I thought maybe we were both a little bit rusty, but we definitely made some great shots that were good for highlights and everything. But uh, more what I was getting at was like before before I showed the highlights, I was talking a little bit about Ray, and I said that one of the great things about Ray is sitting across from him makes you a better player. Like yes, you can't. You can't relax. You just even when I can remember one of the thank nice you. Nice shot. Um, I thanked you before you said nice shot. I just knew it was coming. Um, I still remember playing him in a semi final in London, and there was I was in control, and I had a button. It was out here on the side. I, he had a button here, and I just went, oh, I got all I got to do is take it out. But I relaxed a little bit, and when I hit his, it rolled in just a bit. And then he was able to come in off that and create a 20. Like, I thought I had him. It was deep enough in the round that I'm like, oh, all I got to do is hit and stick. And I One little mistake. But now you yeah. play him, and you go, okay, I got to hit and stick, and I got to move that way a little bit because if I leave him anything. Yeah. And, yeah, you'll see him. He'll, he'll take his time. He'll, like, and, yeah, makes you better. Makes you better or you yeah, lose one I, or the other. I felt the same way playing playing Jason once. I thought yeah. I had him. And he'll come through with some shot that just totally turns the game around. Well, and the worst part is he's so nice. Yes. It's like... <laughs> like, why can't you be a jerk so I can yeah. dislike you while you're <laughs> kicking my well, butt? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Dirty bounce. Very good. And yeah, you've uh, you've traveled with me a few times. We went up to visit the Stone Club, and uh, mm -hmm. that's a great club there. I feel, and you went, you and I went into Toronto into it's going back a couple years now, but yeah. Oh, the Emmett Ray. That was the name of that. Oh crap! That was the name of that bar, the Emmett Ray. That was a very unusual night. It was, me. yeah. Six. I'm kind of getting beat here. I don't know if I'm enjoying this format after Well, all. I mean, I don't know. It's good conversation, right? I was going to say when you were talking about how nice Jason was, I was going to say I, I noticed in a lot of uh, videos, including the one with you and Ray, although it wasn't competitive, um, he gets as much kick out of somebody else's great shot oh, yeah. as he does out of his own. I see the uh, that video of Ray and I brought some some other folks out of the woodwork. I saw Hutch Daddy commenting on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a guy I miss hanging out with. I haven't seen him in uh, haven't seen him in a long time. Oh. Yeah, he came out. I went with him to. Uh, you guys went to Teeswater, wasn't it? Yeah, they're yeah. playing the. Uh, Peter had that charity tournament. Mm hmm. Hmm. There's another guy who hasn't played in a couple of months, and then you play Andrew? him, and yeah. you'd never know. Yeah. Oh. 
I don't know. Is that a Super Steve? Uh, kind of, I guess. Oh. Mm. You opened the door, and I didn't want it, apparently. Do you, um, do you have a favorite tournament? Uh. Oh look at me! I'm still in the uh, I'm still in the three player Four. singles format oh. right? <laughs> mindset. There we go. At least oh, I got two no, points. Oh no! I still got a oh, shot here. I still got one here. Well, that looks like this could be a skunk then. Oh crap! I am supposed to have this, aren't I? It didn't get kicked out. I wasn't paying enough attention. Yeah, I started the very first round. Yeah. I kind of feel bad. <laughs> but not. But not. Not enough to. Lose. Not really. Not really. Yeah. Okay, there's a skunk. It's funny, uh, long story, but Elaine and I were just having this conversation today. Um, I've been enjoy I've been playing disc golf, which I absolutely love, and uh, so I watched some of the pros play, and the girl who's considered, the young lady who's considered to be the best female player in the world, a girl by the name of Paige Pierce, uh, they're about to release a documentary on her. And uh, one of the, they've got a teaser, like a trailer for that documentary, and they interview her dad. And apparently, when she was growing up playing, her dad was very hard on her. And he was like, the number of times people came to me and said, you can't say that to a six year old. You can't talk to an eight year old that way. And he was like, it was just that, it's just how we were, right? But I mean, there'd be different levels. And Elaine and I were talking about that, and she goes, there's probably people that don't agree with the fact that I wouldn't let our boys win anything. Like when our boys started playing crokinole and I sat down to play them, if they beat me, they beat me. Oh, right. You know you what I mean? They didn't give away the game. No. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, she was like, there'd be people that don't think that's right. But I mean, mm -hmm. I think it worked okay. Worked out okay. As oh, far, yeah. you know. And when I say that, I mean, at the same time, I didn't play them with the same intensity that I would a competitive match. Like when they were first learning, right. yeah, there's a different level of trying, but I would never intentionally flub a shot and let them win. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I just, yeah, it's interesting. But. I so sorry, playing, I think, sorry, go ahead. I remember playing uh, chess with somebody younger and purposely working it out so we'd end up tied until I thought they were old enough to be able to take Yep. The idea of losing once in a while. Right. I think a little bit of it is is knowing the person. Like, if for me to whoop the boys, drove them. Like they wanted to beat me so bad. Yeah, beat dad. And uh, I think it means more when they know they earned it. But well, there was that then. I don't know why I keep talking about chess, but there was that book on that searching for Bobby Fischer. Uh, it was a young kid in, U in the U.S. who was quite a prodigy, and uh, the father couldn't understand why. Great shot. He didn't want to play anymore. Mm-hmm. And it was because he didn't want to keep beating Dad. Oh, <laughs> how young was this kid? Oh, at the time he was probably like ten or something. Okay. And he was winning. Get in first or second place, first or second place in his division and his okay. age division in the whole U.S. Okay. Yeah. He ended up a good player, like not one of the top players, but now my kids, my kids feel no shame about beating me. But. <laughs> Thank you. So, do you still play chess? Uh, mm -hmm. Online once in a while. Okay. And when you got family going, it's kind of hard. Like, I end up playing five minute chess because something always interrupts you if you're trying mm. to play a long game online. So, playing five minute chess, your skill level goes down quite a bit because you're really not thinking, it, thinking things through. You're just killing me here, aren't you? The conversation is just a ploy to distract you. <laughs> you were talking about favorite tournaments. I, I, right, I, yeah, I was thinking I asked you a question and then we took a, I don't took know a hard I, left turn there. If I have one. I, I like the fact that there's so many different ones. Yep. Like they, they all have their own kind of uniqueness to it. Yep. I always enjoy, uh, well, I enjoy them all, but uh, one that stands out is when you go down to Lewiston. 
Turtle Island? Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. And they just feed you and they feed you. They feed you all day long, right? <laughs> yeah, you eat, you play Gorgonol, you eat, you play Gorgonol, you eat. And, uh, yeah. And there, they just, I mean, it's there in their community center, and the whole community just seems so happy and excited to have us there, right? Yes. They, yeah. Yeah. Notice that the conversation goes quiet yep. as we're yep. all getting our twenties. Oh no! You can start talking again now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of pressure to carry on a conversation and and keep up the yep keep up the caliber of play. Here we go. I jinxed it. Nice shot. Thank you. Extra point for the flip. Now here's something people think I'm cruel because if I'm in a competitive tournament and mm -hmm. somebody says, who's got a hammer? You know this. You won't tell me. I won't answer. It's, it's I, my fault. I should yep. know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, I'd never lie to somebody. Right. I just... You I just, just stare at them. Yes. <laughs> You've been on the receiving end of <laughs> <Yes>. this. <laughs> and people can say that's not fair, but I, I think that part of the game, part of any game is situational awareness. In Schneider House... I, I remember that the first time I did it. I yep. looked at you and said, do I have hammer? And you just sat there stood at me, mm -hmm. st stared, stared at me. And I knew that meant yep. it's up to you to find out, to yeah. figure it out. But yeah, I mean... Uh, I didn't uh, take it personally. I just, oh, yeah, I hope not. I mean, <laughs> it's part of the game. But yeah, you can... Now, uh, do I have... <laughs> Count the buttons. Yes. This looks... Ooh, I didn't think you were lining that upright, but you gave that a good run. There we go. Five twenties, and you still lose. There's uh, uh, ninety-nine percent of the time I won't answer that question, uh, but I, I do remember playing in a tournament in Budapest, and I was playing against a young girl. I say young girl; she was like early twenties, probably, and she was so nervous. And I was beating her so bad. And it was in the fourth round, she asked the question, the answer come out of my, I'm just like, no, no, you've got hammer. I just, I didn't have the heart to just stare at her. <laughs> oh. That, uh, you mentioned the Snyder Haas tournament. That one is one of my favorites too. Yeah, that's yeah. very interesting. You're not just playing for yourself, really. Mm-hmm. And I know you already know this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the audience for a minute, Ron. But the uh, the Schneiderhaus tournament, uh, they hold it in a museum in Kitchener, and uh, that's where they house the. They've got. Uh, you probably knew this because you've seen it there. The the original corporal board right. that Eckhart Wethlaufer built. But every every year they uh, they would invite seven clubs. I wonder if I can get a this one's going to go into that peg and come back. Okay, that'll be interesting. Oh, <laughs> shot! I can't throw anything at you because the camera's on. <laughs> oh, and then I do that. Yep, <laughs> you did. Um. Yeah, but they invite seven tournaments, and every tournament sends their top four players. So you go in, and you end up, you play, that's another place they love to feed you. You play uh, 12 matches in the morning, and then play another 12 matches in the afternoon. There's no finals, or no anything like that, but what you do is you play everybody there, except the other three people that are part of your club, and you have individual scores at the end of the day, but also the team scores. And yeah, that's just, that's a lot of fun. And just like all the tournament, I mean, that one, you end up after you've played a couple of years, you end up knowing most of the people that are there. Yeah. So it's just a real, almost like a family gathering when you go there. Mm -hmm. A little late to try and start hiding here, but... Mm.
I definitely think this conversation is working out in my favor. Yes, because it seems to be. We're normally uh, more even than this. But, uh, That's what I'll tell everybody anyway. There you go. Um, my starting. Here's a, here's a question for you. I'm going to put you in front of the firing squad. When things start back up, when the NCA starts back up again, <laughs> okay. which player do you think is going to hit the ground running? Who's going to win the first tournament back? Ooh, that's a tough one. Hey, you look at uh, there for a while. I mean, he's still right there, obviously, but Justin Slater is considered to be, yeah, just a fantastic player. But you look at how strong Andrew Hutchinson has come on in the last little while. And Jason Beerling yeah. was leading the NCA standings when things when things came to a stop. Right. And uh, I remember uh, it was a while ago. Um, Jason Malloy said to me, he goes, yeah, that the advantage would be. He was predicting a Tracy was going to win once things open back up because there's three of us here in the house that play. We would be able to stay sharper. But I just went down to visit Ray a few days ago. The man <laughs> yeah. did not look rusty. Right. And yeah. you're talking about Hutch Daddy. You went and played in the tournament with him after him not playing for months. Yeah. The man did not look rusty late. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if things will change that much as far as who's at the top. I, I I wasn't suggesting it would be a dark horse. I was just looking for your your prediction. You you just you're gonna shy away from this altogether, aren't you? Huh? I don't know who to. If you don't pick Justin, I think I I think you have to go with Andrew or Jason just because of. The way they've been playing. All right, well. Nathan had an interesting article once where over the period of a certain time Ooh. only three or four people have won the tournaments over the last two years or something right. like that. Yep. And Jason and Andrew, I believe, were well, what two did, of them. What did Justin go on a tear that he won like seven singles tournaments in a row or something like that? Yeah, there was a point where he was almost unbeatable. Ah! Swing and a miss. Is that 4 2 in this match? Is that right or no? Uh, I don't even know. I haven't been keeping track. <laughs> yeah. Too busy talking. Too busy talking. Little... I, do, I do think, though, not to, to change off of that answer. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't have any. I do so. think they need to just uh, declare a winner. <laughs> oh, from the from the NCA. Yeah, there's there hasn't been anything official, and I think for a while people were hoping that all the COVID stuff would go away quickly, and right. maybe you could combine two years into one right. or something. But yeah, it's been long it's, enough now that yeah. we almost need to we almost need to start fresh when it does start. Mm -hmm. Well, there, the, the St. Jacob's Club keeps stats, and I was in the lead on the stats of that with one night to go. I think Andrew Hutchinson was the closest behind me, but, I mean, I would have had to have shot with my left hand, and he would have had to shoot lights out in that last night for him to catch up to me. So, yeah, it was like almost a year later when Howard called me and went, oh, I guess you're the winner. <laughs> like, you guess? I mean, you guess. I've already got it written in my diary, buddy. Oh, that was ugly. What I find interesting is when, when you started um, and Connor started, mm -hmm. you guys were both already at like one of the top levels really early. Like it didn't take you any time to get into it. Did you already start? Did, like had, had you already been playing a lot or did you just start? Uh, wow. Well, out. My mom sent me a picture a while ago when I'm, I had to, I had asked for the date on it on the back of the picture. I was 19 months old, sitting down at a coconut board with my grandfather. 
Wow. So, I mean, that's as close to as having been played for my whole life as it gets, right? Oh, okay. But, I mean, I grew up in Nova Scotia. There was no competitive crokinole there. I even moved here, and uh, there was no... Uh, I didn't know about the competitive crokinole. Uh, I played pickup hockey with Roy Campbell. I didn't even know Roy when I went there. I went with my buddy Anton, who introduced me to Roy. And uh, I'll always remember that. Very first night I met Roy, like I walked in, there's half a dozen guys in the dressing room. And Roy spoke to me like he knew me. And I'm like, hello? That's just how he is. Friendly guy. So, I mean, it was pretty, pretty instant friendship there. And uh, it was one of the first nights I was there. And I overheard somebody say, how did you make out at the Crokinole tournament? Crokinole tournament? Crokinole. And he's like, oh, yeah, there's these tournaments. I go to a tournament every month. There's two clubs that I go to. And I'm like, mm-mm, well, let me in. And, uh, yeah, it's still, it was still a while after that before I got around to it. Uh, like a lot of people, I was a little intimidated to start going to clubs. And I'm like, do I really want to go play all day? And, yeah, I want to go play all day. Yeah. But, I mean, I started out at St. Jacob's in the, in the B division. And uh, it took me a little while to work my way up into the A pool. Uh, but, like, at that time, Roy and I were playing so much, and, and the boys get into it. So the four of us the four of us would sit and play. And that's one of the reasons that the two of them got so good so fast was because, you know, we are sitting around playing and dissecting and... You know, Roy and I would play against Reed and Nolan, and we'd stop and go, "Oh, oh no, do, do, don't do that shot. Do this. Like, consider this." And just, they, like, it just helped them develop the strategy so fast, right? Well, that's one thing we're quite lucky at that when you consider the people we play with, yeah, in the Waterloo Club and the St. Jacobs Club, yes, you can learn a hell of a lot whether you're double partner with them or whether you're just yes against them. Either way, you learn a lot about Bugger. strategy, shots mm -hmm. you might not have ever thought of before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this just because mm -hmm. it's interesting. Yep. Oh! One at the double and the 20. Super wrong. Super wrong. Anyway. He's starting up new uh, new expressions here. And yeah, as so often happens, I have no idea what the score is right now. I have no clue. But you just had hammer, so I know it's your shot. Yeah. I think uh, I was telling Mackenzie about it today that that you were gonna come and play, and I'm like, kind of want to have this conversation. And I've I've. Uh, Nolan was telling me about some guy that does these radio interviews locally with like uh, high school sports athletes, and he'll ask a whole bunch of questions that have absolutely nothing to do with the sport. So Mackenzie actually printed me off some questions today. Like, uh, if you were stuck on a if you were stuck on a desert island, and you only had three movies to watch and repeat, what would they be? Ooh, three movies to yep. watch and repeat. Oh my God! Right. I'd have to start to... If you can keep this PG, I'd appreciate it. Like, come on, Ron. That was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice hey, double. Yeah. Triple takeout. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately included my own. Oh, bugger. You don't like I'd that have to, I'd have to figure out one of the Tom Hanks movies. Not sure which one I'd prefer, though. I'm He's not sure if I was stuck money. on a desert island that I'd want to watch that one about him being stuck on a desert no, island. No, that, that would kind of be depressing. <laughs> you'd be and looking, be you'd be looking for a Washington ones to... Okay. Yeah. You'd be looking for a... Ba what, did he have a basketball? I think it was a volleyball that he painted uh, a face on. I can't think of his name, though. Although I think I told you this once before, going back to the who will win, not necessarily next year, mm -hmm. but I did tell you at one time that probably within the next, let's say five years, that 
a Tracy, if not two Tracys, mm -hmm. will win at the World Championships. Well, that one year, uh, Reed and Nolan placed second in doubles, like yeah. one point behind the Beerlings, mm -hmm. and then Reed was one point out of making the top ten, the top four, the final four. Right. It was just the year, uh, the year that Darren Carr. I think Darren Carr was one point ahead of him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just and made. he yeah he ended up getting into the final table against Justin. Yeah. 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 That would have been Roy and uh, Roy and Connor. And uh, yeah, I would say you're right. Um, that it was funny. Went through a spell there where Nolan was Nolan was the force to be reckoned with. I mean, he was the the youngest to go to an NCA um, final up in Belleville. His or no, he went to semifinal. His yeah, I played Nathan in one semifinal. He played Ray in the other semifinal. He gave Ray a run for his money. They went to their third the third because but there you play three matches and it's like you have to win to uh, best two of three yeah you have to win the best two out of three and uh they went to a third match so like, you give them a serious run but yeah ray had the enjoyment of knocking nolan out in the semi-final oh, and then nice. uh, that was my follow-through and then not and then beating me in the final oh, oh nice job thank you Not Are you setting me up there. here? Or what? What's going Apparently. on? What's going on there? Huh? Oh, ooh. Oop, just touched my own. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, ho -ho! Post rule, I have to put that in my 20 if cup. I can't get one myself. Right? Oh! I won't let my kids win, but I'll let you get a 20 once in a while. <laughs> I got greedy, I was going for the double. Oh, a little short. Page out of Roy Campbell's book. Is that it? Well, I, I, I'm not supposed to be asking you that. You needed that to win. You would have tied. If you hadn't hit mine, you would have tied. But. Uh, well, I had 25, though. Yeah, but I had five. Oh, right. Before you had five you there if I had not before, hit it. We were You're tied. Right. Before you shot, we were tied. Right. So that one I just played so casually, I actually needed. <laughs> you didn't need to keep your shooter on, but you needed to. Uh, you need to get mine off. Yeah. Wow. Now it's me that the conversations. Nice shot. Playing Ray once in Belleville, mm -hmm. and uh, I had just lost to somebody eight to nothing, right? One of the it was it was the A group of the, the finals, mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, off a good start, I just lost eight nothing," and he said, uh, "He said so, beat somebody eight nothing, you're back to right, <laughs> you're back to even." And I thought, "Okay, there's a good mindset to have." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, ugly. Oh. That was a great try. <laughs> hmm. 
Nice. Thought it was there. He might be a little far away. Whose hammer is it? <laughs> you want to close in as I just stare at you and don't answer? I do. <laughs> what a jerk. Wouldn't even answer a basic question. It's your hammer because I did that final shot to that five last time. So, which makes... I had counted the buttons and knew that before I answered the question. But before I asked the question. Which makes this almost impossible. But we'll see. Oh, I actually... I actually hit the guy I wanted to hit. I just didn't have any legs on it. That's yours. So, what do you think makes the difference uh, in competitive crokinole between a good player and a great player? One big one, I think, is consistency. Okay. Um, and then I think... Um, I don't, I don't know if you'd call it strategy. I just think seeing some of the shots that other people might not see, seeing some of the possibilities and mm -hmm. angles. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it, I think consistency is a big one. Like consistently. Like that, so you can right, consistently being cons the <laughs> consistently. <super speed. laughs> There's a question about competitiveness. How competitive do you get? Say, say it's not a tournament, we're just playing, and yep. like that shot there. Now I could have gone for a 20 there, but in my mind, this shot, you, your guy was there. I could have gone for a 20, I just hit it and step stuck instead because I'm three ahead. Okay. And I, I don't know where you draw the line between doing that to win because you get competitive or going for the 20 just for the experience of going for the 20. Yeah, I mean... Ooh, it almost came back. I mean, it kind of depends if I'm feeling it or, you know, if, uh, if, I'm, if I'm working on my angle in 20s at that time. Like, if it's something like... My angle in twenties aren't really working for me. Like I need, I need to practice these. Here's an opportunity for an angle in twenty. Mm. Um, and when I when I talked earlier about uh, different levels of of trying, when like when the kids were learning, call them kids, not kids anymore. Um, when they but they, when they were learning to play, um, I would roll in when it wasn't good strategy to roll in. That that's right. in that way I wouldn't try as hard. But in, uh, yeah, you don't flub shots, but um, another thing, like... Is it mine? Uh, no, it's my shot. Yeah, it's my shot. That's how you know you're having a good conversation. You can't yeah. remember whose shot it is. But no, I mean, let's say like when we were down at one of those PAX events and teaching people, and I'm sitting there playing as somebody brand new. Yeah, I'm not you don't want to. You know, oh, or if yeah. you get in the feeling that, uh, like, if you were having a really bad night, and I was beating you over and over again, and I had the opportunity to drain another 20, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> but, I mean, Don't we go back and forth enough. I could have a perfect round, and you could have all eight in the gutter, and you're going to go, well, that sucked, and and keep playing. It's yeah. not going to upset. Like, it's not genuinely going to upset you. Yeah. So, but I don't, I don't know. Did I answer your question? I think so. Okay. The, the answer was, is kind of, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. So what do you see in the difference between levels of uh, 
competitive crokinole players? What makes the best players the best? Yeah, you're asking me to reveal what... Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Your secrets. No, not at all. <laughs> no, I just... Uh, we just recorded a video today, and that video might come out before this one does. I don't know. But um, I, I think that there's... there. Yeah, so I... It's not really giving anything away, regardless of which one comes out first. But I talked about... In this video, I talked about uh, three keys to success in Corpinal. And one is the physicality. So the, the skill to shoot an open 20, to get through the pegs, to consistently, to, to, to have the skill to be able to angle in, to know how to make those shots. And then the, the second key is strategy. Now, um, you said that you don't feel, you were saying, you said something earlier, but oh, I don't know if it's strategy or they just see things. I think that there, there are people that are just outside of that top tier that what keeps them outside of that top tier is that they don't know strategy. They don't know strategy to the same level. Right. But when you look at the top five, six, eight, ten players, I feel like they all have a very similar understanding of the strategy. But then, so, yeah, backing up a little bit, I talk about the physicality. You can take two guys, uh, uh, two players of similar skill. The one with stronger strategy is right. going to win. Right. There have been times that I wouldn't necessarily say I'm playing against someone who has better skill than me, but they're shooting better in that round than I am or in that game, and I can beat them on strategy. Right. And so that's a difference. And then the third key that I really dug deep on in this most recent video is the mentality that um, how well can someone recover from missing a shot? Mm -hmm. I mean... You and I both know people that start playing bad and they just circle the drain, like mentally. Yeah. Yes. And, and you yeah. can you can go, oh, he's done. And, or there there's people that there's people that give up. Um, on a on a on a round. Oh, I should have stayed right out here. That mm -hmm. was dumb. See, there's a there's an example Keep of strategy. If I, if I had stayed right here, you wouldn't have had a chance to win, and now you're going to win this round. Oops, or except unless I do that. Then that's just disastrous. But yeah. that's the physicality that I was talking about. But, um, but yeah, the, uh, the the under pressure. And, it, I mean, it sounds silly to feel pressure in a Crokinole tournament, but I felt it. Man, I felt it. Like, And it, it, make, it makes a difference. Because um, I have played you before. Yep. Not necessarily in, in, like, tournament settings, but just playing. Yep. Sometimes I get almost the opposite feeling, not somebody get, when you get on a roll, it's almost as if you get energized yep. and, and, and now every shot you make is possible. Mm -hmm. And that makes it harder to reverse that trend. Yep. Right. <laughs> oh, here's a fancy one. Oh, I don't know what you're trying there. See, I wouldn't have tried that in a tournament. But. Right. But since you've been beating me so bad. <laughs> I don't know that I have. I feel like the last few rounds. Although as guys that haven't been keeping score, who knows? Who knows who's winning here, Ron? It really depends on which games you show besides what their actual score was. Right? That's why I was teasing Ray. By the time Mac was done editing, I was going to have skunked him like 20 rounds in a row. He would have had some mean editing to do. Oh! Thanks, Bob. Yeah, I think the, the, the mental side of the game, because, I mean, there's people that don't... I'm sure somebody's saying on the weekend, I'll have to look into it to see if there's any truth to it or not, but he was saying that um, statistically, somewhere between 3 and 7% of people will perform better in competition than, and we weren't talking about Corbin, I was talking about mm -hmm. disc golf. It was a guy who was talking about this on the disc golf course, that when you get into tournament play, that 3 to 7 people, 3 to 7% of people will elevate, and the rest hmm. don't. 
But uh, yeah, I, mean, I think that side of it um, is huge. Um, the ability to adjust your strategy based on how you're playing. Mm -hmm. Like just knowing yourself, staying within yourself, like that is... Uh, when I uh, when I went to Hungary, here's an example. When I went to Hungary and played, and uh, in the singles playing with Brian Cook, that guy's phenomenal. Oh yeah. And under pressure, like it was nothing. And I mean, I wasn't feeling a lot of pressure there. I was a little hungover to be honest. But um, <laughs> but yeah, there was just there was just another level there. I gave him a great run. I feel I felt good with the run that I gave him. But then uh, the follow-up match when I played in the when I played in the bronze medal match, uh, I couldn't hit the broadside of a burn. I just I was playing against. Uh, and I shouldn't take anything away from him, but I I played against one of the Berzlanovich brothers, great player, and I just couldn't get. I think he skunked me oh, if I remember correctly. I just couldn't get anything going. Ooh, double take. That is not what you one wanted. Was mine. Mm, that's not quite what I wanted, but I'll work with it. I think I'll work with it. No, that was dumb. That was bad. Stop talking to me, Ron. I, re I remember one of those shots with you hid yourself real nice. Brian Cook comes up, comes off his own piece, which he knocks into the 20 for himself. And hits your piece up. Mm, that one, I, I, I actually wasn't... That, I went for a self-assist, and, and as soon as I shot it, I knew what he was going to do. But there was one in an earlier round that I was in control, and he did a bounce back off a peg. Hit mine off a peg, came back, drained the 20. And I'm like, yep. Yeah, he just... Yeah. yeah, I think it was Andrew Hutchinson talking to him afterward, and he was like... Ooh, just like that. Just like that, yeah. He... Uh, he said, oh, yeah, you were in control. Like, you should have won that round, but then he made that shot. And I'm like, but that's what great players do. Yes. They make those tough shots when they need to. And, yeah. Ooh. I remember uh, one of the articles once, one of the years, mm -hmm. could be any year, that Justin won. Yep. And he mentioned that he noticed the other a couple of the other players that he was playing at, at the end games were nervous. Yep. He could tell they were nervous. And he I, I remember, I, I, I don't think I watched that interview or read it. I think somebody was telling me about it. At one point he was like, when I saw his handshake, I knew I had him. But there's people that, that I think, look, I remember, um, yeah, keep bringing up examples of when I get trashed. But um, when I played Hutch Daddy, in uh, at Turtle Island, I had played him twice earlier in the day through round robins, and I think I tied him once and I beat him once. But I felt like I felt like I was in control of those games. So him and I sat down for the semifinal. I sat down with great confidence. I'm like, all right, I've got this. And he looked ner there was, like he looked nervous. I, I thought I thought I saw his handshake a couple times, but he just has a way to channel that nerves into great shots. And he spanked me. Like he would not miss. He, he I mean, I didn't even. He keeps sinking all of his yeah, uh, open twenties, right? I, it was like I made one mistake around, and he made no mistakes around. Right. Like he just, he just wouldn't miss. Yeah. And, and ten nothing. And uh, yeah, it was Andrew Herhuth uh, offered to make me special padded shorts for the next time I needed to play against Andrew. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, that was a guy who was playing early in the day, and and I felt like, I mean. I, there have been different times like I feel like I did well against Andrew. I didn't I didn't feel intimidated sitting out, like I mean intimidated, but you didn't feel like uh oh I'm gonna lose this. Like I remember the first couple times playing Justin, it was like it wasn't am I gonna lose, it's how bad am I gonna lose. Um But yeah, I, I never I never really felt that for quite a stretch, I never really felt that with Andrew and then that day it was just like he found another gear. He just he mm -hmm. just found another level, and that's what he's done those last few tournaments that he was playing. He just yeah, he's got a confidence in his shots. He's he's not a scared scared to go over the, mm -hmm. the twenty hole at nope. all. It doesn't bother him at all. Nope, in the least. 
he's got his line and he knows what he wants to do. And... I remember him saying at one point like he felt the big like there was a bit of a running joke and I'm not sure he found it funny, but we were gonna get him a jersey made with the number five on it. Because it seemed like every tournament he went to, he was in fifth place. He was just outside of those final, yeah. those those final four. Nathan had an article about that. You'd ask who was in first, fourth, second, third, fourth, and sixth, and nobody right. would ask who was in fifth. Yeah, he didn't need he didn't need to ask. But I mean, but he did that for like a season. It felt like he was just he was just fifth for a season, just outside the hunt. Oops. And then uh, at some point, it was in a conversation about okay, what changed. And he was like, he didn't really, and yeah, hopefully I'm not misquoting him, but I feel like what he said was that, um, oh no, yeah, but that was supposed to go off too. Still a, (laughs) still a great shot. Um, he didn't, he said he didn't really feel like his skill level had improved that much. It was more just, um, shot selection, confidence consistency just like that that side of it and it's the Mm. that's that third key that mentality side that um the the slight edge principle you can call it any number of things but um yeah and i I mean when you look at the world championships there's a there's a certain amount of it is friggin endurance oh yeah you've already played Play doubles yeah. all morning for hours. There are people that don't play doubles. They save themselves to play singles. Yeah. But I mean, even though, like, Robert Bonnet, how old was he when he won the Worlds? And I'm like, it was impressive. Anybody winning the Worlds is impressive. But for him, it was like, the man was like 80 years old. Yeah, I should have been. I'm like, yeah. I want some. I don't know if it was my turn to go first or not. But doesn't matter. I since like it went in, we'll count. I don't like, I like having a hammer. So. I was thinking once, uh, I was thinking once, okay, so let's say, I think I, I don't know where I ended up, 13th, 14th, 15th or something in this partial year. Ah, yep. And I'm thinking, okay, so if you have a goal to end up in the top 10, let's say, it sounds like a reasonable goal. Mm Mm-hmm. But now you look at the players that are already in the top ten, and a couple others, yep. and then you start thinking, okay, well, which one of them is is going out, so so that you get in the top yep. ten, and it becomes a little harder than it sounds. Yeah. Nice shot. Oh, that was bad. I, I remember having that exact goal of, okay, I want to crack the top 10 and whatever. I think I played a partial season my first year, and then the next year I was going to have the full season. And I'm like, yeah, that was my goal to crack the top 10. And I think I ended in 6th or 7th, something like that. So, I mean, I was nice. I was tickled pink with that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you're right there because when we did the Accelerate tournament, they started, they wanted the top 8. And then, but I think you were in eleventh, and you ended up there because there was people that like yeah. that weren't able to make it. I was close enough to Andrew's house that they knew right. I was available if somebody had to back out right. at the last there minute. There you go. So you can you can, you can try to be <laughs> humble if you want. It's my start. Oh, okay. come on, man! You can't give me the hammer every round. Yeah. It looks bad when I have the hammer every round and you still beat me. And I didn't end up in last in that tournament. So even though I was last in the rankings in that tournament, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, I think I think I was eleventh at the time because I, I had played an extra tournament more than some of the other people oh. had. <laughs> I so, I don't know. What whatever, it counts. I remember the first the first tournament mm. I made uh, the first tournament I made the A group. Yep. At I remember that too. Was Saint Jacobs. Yep. My, I remember it well. Last tournament of my first year, and I'm thinking, um, I lost to Justin five to three, and mm. at the time, 
you're thinking, that's almost like a victory. I only right. lost five, <laughs> yep. five to three. <laughs> so it depends what mindset you have going into that too. Good shot. I remember that because like you were still working your way up then and still like growing as a player. Yeah. And I remember going, oh, uh oh, poor Ron. He's in for a rough afternoon. And I think you were my first match in the afternoon and you beat me 6 2. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. maybe I should stop feeling bad for Ron and uh, start worrying about my own game. Yeah, Roy Campbell came up to and congratulated me for making the A group. And then he said, the rest of your games are all going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcastically, because he knew yep. he knew all the guys you're gonna have to play. Oh, thank nice you, damage. Comeback. Yes, thank you, damage. That was a tournament when I finally bought my Tracy board. There you go, and that turned everything around. That's what, what? did it. I would rather you made a good shot after you made that statement. But. Yeah. <laughs> I had a board that was like an inch and a half shorter than the regulation tournament size. And I figured, how can I be practicing my angles properly right. if I'm not even playing on the yep. right? Hey, if you're open board. 20s, the distance, everything would be different. I don't know if it was, you still have a shot or <laughs> I should have pulled one out of the gutter. Yes. You're not paying attention. I wouldn't have, no. <laughs> like earlier playing three person and I tried to empty the 20 holder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think another round or two and then we'll uh, do the. We'll, we'll do a race, race to nine. To nine. Perspective, because I kind of wish it had stayed on. You can stop I'm, that any time, Andrew. I'm getting a lot of uh, these circular ones. Yep. That we kind of drain in afterwards. Say so the scoreboard doesn't show how they went in. That's true. <laughs> That might be one of the things that we see when the NCA starts back up. Not so much that... Oh, you didn't have a perfect round, did you? I had seven. Okay, cool. That's darn good. Um, just the focus. The, the people having the endurance for the focus to focus all day mm -hmm. and still play well at the end of the day, right? Like, uh, yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting because, yeah. And again, I'll fall back on chess again. I mean, I, I the first time I went to a tournament, and the rules were an hour and a half for your first 30 moves. Okay. And then if you hit that, there's an extra hour past that. So mm -hmm. you have the chance of a five-hour game. And then you play in the afternoon, and then you do it again the next day. And one guy actually said he stays in shape, and he thinks that was part of his... Uh, advantage yep. was because he was physically in shape and yep. he could mentally stay in focus that long. Yeah. Remember Jason Beerling saying that, that uh, he's noticed that when at times in his life when he's in better shape he plays better propanol. Even though there's no physical like... Right. There's yeah. no real correlation. Other than what you just said, like of the, the mental alertness. Yeah. Bugger. So if you win this round, it must mean you're in better shape than me. <laughs> I can't leave that there. All right, it worked earlier. That's going to be interesting. I'm going to put that one off, put this one into that peg and back it up. Really? 
<laughs> it was almost Come a on. different bag. Yeah. See, now that's a shot I probably wouldn't have even tried or thought of. Ah. But, uh... Oops. I have, mo on more than one occasion, been accused of being optimistic. Oh, nice shot. But it's handy when you're in a, in a no-lose situation to be able to see things like that. Mm-hmm. Because what's the worst that can happen? You lose right. anyway yep. if it doesn't work, right? And for the life of me, I can't explain why sometimes it feels like I just can't miss, and other times it feels like I just can't hit. Right. <laughs> if we can figure that out, Ron, we'll write a book. Yes. 